Hello, and welcome back to XRP Vault, where we bring you the most recent and intriguing XRP news. We're giving away 10,000 XRP to those who are watching. All you have to do is upvote, subscribe, comment XRP is king and watch the video to the end to be eligible. The winners will be picked next month and publicized on the community page of the channel. And as the SEC prepares to ban itself from the Bitcoin sector, I want to explain something shocking that happened at a Senate hearing today in this video. We have been patiently waiting for the CFTC to take the initiative and begin applying some pressure to Gary Gensler and the SEC. It appears as though Gary Gensler may be expelled from the Bitcoin sector, so I want to show you what the CFTC announced today at the conclusion of the video. In addition, I want to discuss the resolution of the Ripple SEC case. We have something really fascinating to discuss after reviewing some recent tweets. Alder Roddy and Brad Garland House, I'd like to discuss with you why tomorrow might be a crucial day for this case. Watch the video through to the end to learn why you won't want to miss it. Thus, this is actually kind of funny. I swear it's been 10 years since I last had a zit on my face. But as soon as I start shooting these films with an HD camera and get a huge pimple in the middle of my face, bang. Now that my new camera can capture it, it's humorous because my old camera couldn't. But as soon as I receive this new camera boom, it's in my face. However, it's kind of humorous, so let's get to the meat of the matter. And I'd like to begin by talking about the CFTC hearing that really took place earlier today. It's crucial to remember that the SEC and the CFTC are engaged in a legal battle over cryptocurrencies. I was somewhat perplexed for a while as to why the CFTC wasn't taking a stronger stance. Gary Gensler has been yelling that he believes every single cryptocurrency is a security for the past year or two, despite the fact that some of the cryptocurrencies he's saying are securities are unmistakably not. Ethereum wasn't a security, according to his own organization, but now he's claiming it might be. Ethereum is currently regulated by the CFTC, and there are also stable coins. It is clear that stable coins are not securities. Something must be expected to yield a profit for it to qualify as a security. How do you anticipate making money with a stable coin? Gary Gensler is making the rounds, suggesting stable coins are securities, but the CFTC hasn't said anything. The CFTC commissioner really came out and essentially said, I have no idea what's going on at the SEC. Just today during a hearing, Ethereum, in our opinion, is a commodity. That seems evident to us. And the reason for that is that the SEC essentially already informed us that it wasn't a security, and we have been overseeing the Ethereum markets. In addition, he continued, we don't understand how stable coins may function as a security. It's quite clear to us that they are commodities. Today, what we're witnessing is that the CFTC is starting to finally enter the picture and claim a portion of the market. This is a significant advance. But believe me, the CFTC wants to exert as much control over this business as possible, just like the SEC has been doing. They won't stop at a theory and stable coins. In my opinion, the CFTC will eventually start to actually take over some of these projects. The SEC case's repercussions, in my opinion, could be a major catalyst for that. The SEC suffers a severe setback in this situation, which will pave the way for the CFTC to gain more control over the cryptocurrency market. That immediately relates to the topic we'll cover later in the video because the SEC faces a huge risk of losing a significant chunk of the jurisdiction they have been attempting to establish over the previous few months. In any case, it's a pretty positive sign that the CFTC is now cooperating with Gary Gensler and stepping up to the plate. One of my major worries in the past was that Gary Gensler would seize control of the market simply because no one would challenge him and Gary Gensler would cheat his way to the top. Thank goodness, that doesn't seem to be what will happen. Now it appears that Gary Ganser's shady business practices may potentially cost him control of this sector. Gary Gensler is reportedly utilizing numerous email addresses at the SEC, which is a rather stunning act that we were unaware of. Eleanor Tarot reported on this. She has done an excellent job of reporting on the Bitcoin market, and she essentially discovered that Gary Gensler has several distinct SEC email addresses. 
she contacted the SEC to inquire as to why this was the case. But in essence, the most likely explanation is so that Gary Gensler can conceal messages under many email addresses when other parties wish to hold him accountable and request his emails. Attorney Fred brought forward a further crucial argument, stating that this does not even include his Gmail and Yahoo accounts. Attorney Fred is basically arguing that Gary Gensler's several email addresses for the SEC are only the beginning of the murky situation because he also probably has personal email addresses that he has been utilizing. And that just serves to highlight the type of regulator we are dealing with. We are not dealing with someone who genuinely wants to assist investors or provide transparent regulations for the cryptocurrency market. Instead, he wants to conceal his desire to transform into a snake and work behind the scenes to further his own goals. So let's talk about the ripple effect in the SEC case moving forward. And as I mentioned in my video from last night, the SEC suffered three significant losses yesterday. One, they failed in their effort to prevent Binance from purchasing Voyager. In essence, the judge in that instance reprimanded the SEC for failing to provide this business with any clear regulations. Why do you think you can intervene and halt this deal? Second, the SEC suffered a significant defeat in their initial trial against Grayscale. The SEC's claim that a spot Bitcoin ETF was any different from a futures Bitcoin ETF was practically laughed at by the judges in that case. Finally, I believe it is common knowledge that the SEC suffered a significant loss in the Ripple SEC case. Essentially all of their top experts were dismissed from the case, while the most significant experts from Ripple, who explained why XRP holders weren't looking to profit from Ripple, were permitted to continue. Funny enough, Brad Garland House tweeted yesterday night immediately following my video, claiming that even though it is only Tuesday, the SEC is in for a tough week thanks to the Voyager and Grayscale rulings. Hence, I found it amusing that Brad Garland House said the same thing I did. The SEC is frequently losing significant cases. Brad Garland House was actually responding to a tweet by Stuart Eldorado, who claimed that the SEC's most recent decision in the Ripple case was completely irrational. Eldorado is basically pointing out that the SEC is now facing a major problem in this case because they cannot possibly demonstrate that XRP itself is a security if they have lost all of their experts who were supposed to explain why XRP holders were anticipating a return from Ripple. We can all agree that none of us XRP owners anticipated that Ripple would raise the price of our coins. All of us consider XRP to be a decentralized digital asset. And it's simply something that must be done in order to access the XRP ledger, a feature that will fundamentally alter our financial system. The SEC was attempting to imply that the XRP ledger was of no real significance, and that what these investors were actually doing was purchasing XRP in order to invest in Ripple. Folks, this approach is being flatly rejected by the judge in this instance. She removed all of those experts from the case for this reason. She won't even permit the SEC to attempt to make this argument. So what does this mean moving ahead for the SEC? Moreover, this severely undermines their efforts to demonstrate how XRP fits into our assessment system. Torres just negated the SEC's opportunity to establish one of the prongs. What does this imply about moving ahead then? This puts the SEC in a terrible position for summary judgment, so to speak. Judge Torres will not consider the SEC to be experts who are essential in establishing one of Howie's prongs. What will the SEC do as a result? One choice is for them to do nothing and wait to see what Judge Torres rules on during summary judgment, and how much, and then they can proceed from there. Nobody can predict what will happen. So it's safe to say that things aren't looking good for the SEC based on what's transpiring in these decisions leading up to summary judgment. So, the SEC must now evaluate the risk. How much are they ready to lose if they enter summary judgment and Judge Torres rules that something like since XRP satisfies these requirements, they entered summary judgment? Not a security is XRP? That may be disastrous for the SEC because every single token might then claim in court that XRP was not a security for the reasons listed above. We are not a security risk because of this. The SEC must prevent this from happening because it would be catastrophic. We're still in a position in this case where Ripple might still lose. Based on the data we're seeing, that's incredibly unlikely, 
but it's still a possibility. Nevertheless, there's no way of knowing if that's going to happen. So, the SEC still needs to decide in this case. The idea that the SEC could effectively avoid any harm to their reputation as an organization by merely resolving the matter is one of the case's most intriguing aspects. Also, it's vital to note that other influential members of the XRP community are stating there might be a settlement, not just me. We are at a point where a settlement of any kind is quite likely, according to attorneys Bill, Fred, and Jeremy Hogan. A settlement would enable the SEC to declare that XRP is not a security but is instead just XRP, which is why it is such a likely outcome. All other cryptocurrencies not mentioned above are excluded. And we won't even explain why XRP isn't a security. We'll simply say that the rest of the market needs to get over it and move on. As the SEC would indeed lose control of XRP, this represents a significant victory for the SEC. But there are other additional coins available. And the SEC would still keep those in play. A loss to Ripple could potentially remove those other coins from play. A settlement with Ripple keeps them in play. The SEC has 300 additional cases planned. The SEC will not want to risk those cases. They want to make sure they can start winning some cases. This case against Ripple has not been resolved. Well, for the SEC, it's been somewhat catastrophic. Why then wouldn't the SEC remove it when they can? It is clear that we are dealing with a non-logical agency. And what I just said makes a lot of sense. The SEC does a lot of strange, absurd stuff. Can we therefore state with certainty that a settlement will occur in the next several days? Obviously not. Nobody is aware. In all honesty, Judge Torres might decide on this matter. Nobody knows what will occur tonight. But we are aware of what is imminent. I'm attempting to make the point that the SEC is currently under pressure. And Ripple is under a lot less strain. Although Ripple may experience some sales, most lawyers now believe there is no chance XRP will be called to security. But that's undoubtedly not the victory the SEC was hoping for. In order to maintain their position as the industry's preeminent authority, they needed a victory. Also for that to take place. At this stage, they require a settlement. With that said, I believe tomorrow may be an eventful day with the possibility of a settlement. Since the SEC commissioners meet on Thursdays to discuss settling cases, almost every single crypto settlement we have seen has occurred on that day. Thus, if settlement drops tomorrow, it may be a very interesting day. Now, if we don't see a settlement by tomorrow, I believe the SEC is suggesting that we won't settle and that we'll wait to hear from Judge Torres. And the reason for that is that if they don't reach a settlement by tomorrow, they may never again have the chance to do so. Judge Torres may issue a summary judgment ruling on Tuesday, and the SEC may not be able to schedule another hearing for Thursday. Thus, I'll be keeping a close eye on tomorrow. I predict that the price of XRP will change beforehand. Yet, as many attorneys who are watching this case, including myself, can attest, a settlement makes perfect sense. Yet, the good news is that nothing will actually move more quickly as a result of it. This lawsuit will shortly come to an end. Simply wait for a settlement or summary judgment. Nevertheless, I really appreciate your being here. I hope this update was enjoyable. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe. It truly means a lot right now. Make sure to.